Um, hi guys, so welcome back. So today in this video we are going to talk about, in this lecture video we are going to talk about antidepressant. And uh, <clears throat> so it's going to be a partly long video. I think I'll, be, I'll make a couple of videos because we are going to talk about um, a few antidepressants, GSSS, RIS, and RI, tricyclic antidepressant, monoamine, and oxidase inhibitor, as well as uh, some of these atypical antidepressants. And um, we'll also look into um, we'll also look into the monoamine hypothesis briefly, as well as how this uh, serotonergic uh, as well as a neuroadrenergic neuron works uh, briefly. And um, yeah. Uh, without, um, I think those are the content of the video that I'm going to talk about today. So let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to talk about um, before I move on to the next uh, slide. Uh, I'll just want to like make a small briefing on the monoamine hypothesis as I have mentioned in the previous video on the uh, mood disorders. So monoamine uh, hypothesis. So this they, uh, this hypothesis states that the depression results from deficiency in one or more of the three key monomines such as the serotonin, norepinephrine as well as the dopamine and it has also made a link uh, in gene expression which say which states that the abnormal functioning gene also uh, could lead to depression. So as I have uh, written here in the first slide uh, we are going to talk about five different types of the antidepressant uh, SSRI, SNRI, TC, FNOI, as well as atypical antidepressant. Not all of the atypical antidepressants, I'm just going to talk about those just famous in exams. Because atypical antidepressants are not so common, but it's good to know those which are common in those which are not common. Okay? So, yeah. So, first of all, we We'll be talking about uh, how this uh, serotonergic neuron as well as neuroadrenergic neuron would be working briefly. So let's move on to the next slide. Okay, uh, I know my drawing. I've just drawn this with uh, like I just solely used mouse. I don't have stylus pen or anything to make a perfect drawing. So just bear with me. I'll be explaining about all of this um, to you guys. So first of all, we're gonna look uh, look into where's the laser. So first of all, we're gonna look into the serotonergic neuron, which is this whole section is actually the serotonergic neuron. So serotonergic neuron, their precursor is tryptophan, and this tryptophan will actually be converted into uh, serotonin by an enzyme. We don't have to look into what is the enzyme, but um, yeah, just. I think you you guys will encounter what is the enzyme in uh, thyroid hormones uh, when you actually look, look into thyroid cases and that's the enzyme here and when you don't have uh, this enzyme here tryptophan cannot be changed to this serotonin and that could actually lead to depression um, that is a side effect of having a low um, thyroid hormones and stuff like that but yeah that's a different part of the thing so now Let's just focus on this thing. Tryptophan will be changed into a serotonin. 5-H3 is an abbreviation for serotonin. And then they will, they will be stored in, inside a vesicle form. And then they will actually be released. Okay. They will actually be released from the presynaptic neuron into the postsynaptic neuron. This is actually the synaptic left. This red color is actually the serotonin. And after serotonin is released, they will actually bind onto the serotonin receptor to the postsynaptic membrane, uh, postsynaptic neuron. And they will actually depolarize and actually transmit the impulse and whatever effect they, that they would exit, they will eventually exit. And this is alpha 2 receptor. I'll talk about what is the function of the alpha 2 receptor later on. And both on the serotonergic neuron and alpha neuroadrenergic neuron will actually have this alpha 2 receptor here. And here we actually have a serotonin uh, transporter. Okay, they are actually involved in the reuptake of the serotonin so this serotonin will actually be uh reuptake into the presynaptic membrane uh, and then they will actually eventually be broken down by this uh, monoamine oxidase mao is uh, an abbreviation for the monoamine oxidase okay this is the mao mao is present in every neurons so they will actually break down this serotonin 
in, uh, into the uh, constituents okay so that is for serotonergic neuron then the second neuron that we're going to talk about is noradrenergic neuron so they are okay so they are uh, the noradrenergic noradrenaline's um precursor is tyrosine tyrosine will actually be converted into noradrenaline there is of course there is an enzyme every convention in our body cannot take not every most of the convention that takes place in our body needs an enzyme for it to be done quickly at a faster rate okay so tyrosine will eventually be changed into nor um, epinephrine or noradrenaline and they will also same uh, they will be stored inside the vesicle then they will be eventually released into the synaptic left but uh, they have two types of receptors on the, on the post uh, synaptic uh, okay um i'm so sorry for those bell sounds uh, okay so yeah those uh noradrenaline will come and bind uh, the post synaptic membrane with uh, and there could be two types of uh, receptor on the post synaptic membrane membrane um the first one is alpha one as so another one is the beta type of receptors and uh, of course this will eventually um exit synthetic uh, activities okay onto that uh, neurons so uh, also this this neuron also will be having an alpha receptor and same as for serotonin serotonergic neuron this one this neuron also would have a reuptake transporter and that is also known as a noradrenaline norepinephrine transporter to reuptake back and even same they also would actually have this meo mono and minor oxidase in order to break down to that noradrenaline back to its uh, precursors or uh, constituents okay and all these uh, neurons will eventually uh, be surrounded by not all these neurons but of course in our body we have uh, receptors for muscarinic as well as a system receptor so uh, we, we, we will be talking about uh, what are the effects of the of course we are giving uh, certain drugs in order to deal with the insufficiency of the precursors or anything that actually eventually cause the deficiency of these monoamines and sometimes those drugs actually can act on these uh, uh, receptors such as muscarinic and streaming receptors eventually causing some side effects uh, so that's why I've included this drawing as well so we'll be talking about all those uh, side effects uh, for each of these antidepressants on the later slides so let us get into the first antidepressant the first antidepressant that i'm going to talk about is the ssri so ssri so the function of the ssri is to inhibit the reuptake of the serotonin uh, as well as they also accomplish that by blocking this uh SERT or the serotonin um reuptake okay so how okay just now i mentioned that they inhibit the reuptake uh, of uh, serotonin so how do they do that is they will actually block this thing so that serotonin will actually remain in the synaptic cleft uh, for a longer period of time and that means they actually can bind to this uh, serotonin receptor for a longer period of time too so so ex uh, yeah so they will eventually cause the increased levels of serotonin to bind onto those receptors and examples as i have mentioned here citalopram fluxetine praxitine as uh, acetoplopram as well as citraline this citraline fluxetine as well as uh, uh, citalopram are the three most common uh, ssri so the uses of this ssri uh, besides the uh, besides the uh, use for depression ssri are also used for psychiatric disorders such as uh, generalized anxiety disorders uh, PTSD uh, that means a uh, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder as well as whole city of compulsive disorder so uh, okay one thing that you need to know that this uh, SSRI take weeks to produce maximum benefit and so why this effect takes longer because in people with depression uh, the G protein tend to cluster in the patches of brain cell membrane rich in cholesterol called uh, lipid raft okay reft repeat lipid raft now when stuck on this raft g protein lack access to molecule called camp which is necessary to work and transmit signals of serotonin however um, later on it was discovered that um, 
SSRI also tend to build up in this lipid graph. Uh, so this resulted in the gradual movement of the G proteins out of the raft towards the region of the membrane where they are able to function better. That's why they take uh, weeks to produce a maximum benefit. And uh, the possible side effects for this SSRI are uh, basically there are three uh, main side effects of this SSRI. The first one is an excessive excessive stimulation of serotonin receptor in the brain which eventually cause insomnia increased anxiety as well as uh, irritability so depression the opposite thing is anxiety so that's what they are causing so when you have uh, this uh, anxiety you will eventually have this insomnia and because you can't sleep and all those things it will eventually cause this irritability and stuff okay the second one it also causes excessive stimulation of the spinal serotonin receptor and this could lead to erectile dysfunction and the third one it can also cause some side effects the GIT as well as CNS eventually causing nausea vomiting as well as diarrhea so that's it for SSRI now we're going to look into SNRI which is somewhat similar to SSRI so SNRI they inhibit same they are going to inhibit that reuptake too okay they are going to inhibit the reuptake of this but then the, the, the difference between the SNRI, SNRI as well as SSRI is they are going to re inhibit the, re the reuptake of serotonin as well as norepinephrine or noradrenaline by blocking the, uh, those SERT as well as NET uh, transporter okay they are not going to block this uh, noradrenaline uh, reuptake transport only they are going to block both uh, serotonin as well as noradrenaline reuptake transporter and those examples are venlafaxine, tesfenlafaxine, duloxetine as well as uh, levamil nasiprine. So uh, the users same uh, as, as, uh, as SSRI, uh, they are used for depression, anxiety as well as pain. But then unlike SSRI, SNRI also can reduce pain as well as uh, uh, can be used for fibromyalgia as well as other pain caused by neuropathy because this is due to the enhanced neuroadrenergic activity within the CNS and uh, as for the side effects we have similar side effects for the SSRI except due to the effects of this uh, neuroadren increased neuroadrenaline in the synaptic cleft they will cause some additional sympathetic effects such as increased blood pressure as well as increased heart rate and eventually uh, and also tremors okay now the third one that I'm going to talk about is a uh, tricyclic antidepressant. So I'm going to talk about uh, okay tricyclic antidepressant. So their mechanism of action is not that straightforward, uh, but then their primary their primary function is to inhibit the reuptake of both serotonin as well as norepinephrine, but with different selectivity. So um, okay. In addition, TCA, okay, TCA, of course, they have a better uh, effect, therapeutic effect than uh, SSRI as well as SNRI, but then since they have a lot of side effects, that's why they are not favorable, okay, because they also block several other receptors such as alpha receptor, histamine receptor, as well as muscarinic receptor, and blockade of this re receptor are uh, responsible in inducing those side effects. So examples, amitriptyline, amoxapine, desipramine, imipramine, nortriptyline, as well as protriptyline. And these users, the users of this uh, tricyclic antidepressant is basically it is used for depression and also for other medical problems. Um, one thing that you need to remember is amitriptyline as well as triptyline is used in migraine as well as uh, neuropathic pain as well as uh, doxepin is actually used uh, to treat uh, insomnia okay so side effects so the inhibition of the alpha receptor is going to cause you uh, orthostatic hypotension as well as dizziness okay inhibition of histamine receptor is going to cause sedation antihistamines same as antihistamines and inhibition of the muscarinic receptor is going to cause you anticholinergic effects such as blood vision dry mouth constipation as well as urinary tension so TCA also block cardiac any plus channel and produce similar effect to anti-arrhythmic agent such as creonidine and this lead to cardiac conduction abnormalities.